Right, so from when I'm recording this, the T20 World Cup is due to start in about 14 hours, and I haven't made a video on it. But here we go. I'm just going to go through the squads. I'm just going to give a quick run through of my opinions on the squads and the fortunes of the teams in the first stage of the competition, which is the the eight teams competing to go into the Super 12. Now, there's two groups, Group A and Group B. I think Group A looks very interesting. I think Group B looks a little bit... mm, I think Group B should be pretty predictable. Group A, any team could finish in the top two. They've got Sri Lanka... Ireland, the Netherlands, and Namibia, and quite honestly, that should be the most interesting part of the whole tournament. Now, Sri Lanka are the big name in Group A, and whilst most of the group world will be familiar with them, I don't think they've actually picked a very good team. They've obviously lost a few players due to suspension from the board recently, but even still, they've picked a lot of batsmen that are quite ill-suited to T20 cricket. Um, Dustin Shanaka, Dinesh Chandamal, I'm just going through them here, Avishka Fernando, etc. They, they don't really seem the type to get you off to a brisk start in the format. Nonetheless, they've still got players like Sundakun and Hasaranga who should be able to do something on these pitches. I think they'll probably be the most important players in the team. And the pace bowlers have picked a decent enough. You know, Lahiro Kamara is the one that comes out to me and thinks, you know, a bit of a strike bowler there, but they've also got Chimera, so they could do something. Ireland are the other full member in that group, and I think they've picked the best possible team they could, um, but it's still probably going to be the Paul Sterling show as far as the batting is concerned. He is among the best batsmen in T20 cricket, in my opinion, but he should be able to be supported by Kevin O'Brien, George Dockrell, Andrew Balburnie, Harry Tector, and Gareth Delaney. But as far as their batting goes, their biggest problem isn't necessarily having quality players there, it's the consistency. And in recent times, unless Sterling fires, they usually have a decently tough time of it. Ireland might actually have the most spin bowling options out of any team in the whole tournament. With the leg spin of Ben White and Gareth Delaney, complemented by the finger spin of uh, Andy McBride, that's who I was thinking of, and Simi Singh. And they've also got a few part-timers in Paul Sterling and George Dockrell. I think Ireland's biggest weakness might actually be the wicket-keeping spot. <laughs> with neither Neil Rock nor Lorcan Tucker proving to be brilliant glovemen at the moment, nor all particularly explosive batsmen or even, you know, ready, steady accumulators. And Curtis Camphor will be Ireland's X-Factor, I think, because he's currently operating as a genuine, like, genuine all-rounder. The Netherlands have selected a squad that I would say is overwhelmingly competent in every aspect. Um... There's no clear weakness, other than perhaps that the wickets might not suit their ideal play style. You know, they've picked a lot of fast bowlers in the squad and not an incredible amount of spinners. But they've still got Peter Sillar and uh, Van der Moer, so they've got those two who are high-performing operators in the format in recent years. But outside of them, it's mostly Philip Bossovane or Bossovane, I'm not really sure how to say his name, who's not particularly experienced, and uh, Colin Ackerman, who's a good player, but more of a part-timer, really, than uh, uh, the sort of guy you want to be relying on to get through your overs. But as far as the Netherlands go, you, you can't underestimate them. They are actually a really, really good lineup, by far the leaders of the associate world at the moment. And with the firepower in their batting lineup and the, the bowling attack they've got, to underestimate them would be uh, pretty silly. Namibia are probably the least established team in the group, but if you've been following associate cricket over the last few years, it won't come as any particular surprise that they're at this tournament, and I would expect them to put up a very good showing. They present, uh, they've come into the tournament with a very well-rounded batting order. Um, you'd expect Bard, Erasmus, Williams and Smith to continue their good form over the recent years. And they've also added former South African all-rounder David Visa. Likewise, with their bowling, Jan Frilink and Schultz have been putting up some incredible numbers over the recent years, so I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, become quite a large factor in the f- performance of Namibia at this tournament. The weaknesses that Namibia have are that they haven't played an incredible amount of cricket against the top, top nations. They've played one match each against Ireland and the Netherlands before, but they've not played an incredible amount of highly competitive cricket. They've generally steamrolled smaller opposition and put in very good performances when they actually do get the chance against higher opposition, but they don't actually get that opportunity very often. All in all, I think that this group could finish in 
basically any order. I think if you had to look at the most likely outcome, it would probably be with Sri Lanka at the top, simply due to their reputation and their experience. But any of these teams could finish top. I would expect, honestly, the Netherlands could finish top. I'm not sure Ireland can. I think the Netherlands are just a little bit better than Ireland at the moment. But if I had to predict where it would be Sri Lanka, the Netherlands, Ireland and Namibia. I think Namibia is probably the only team that can't top the group. I could see them finishing second. But literally, this team's open. Anyone can take it. If they just get a few good early results, anyone can take this group. Group B I find a little less interesting, so I'll probably skim through it a bit quicker. Uh, Papua New Guinea are the feel-good story of the tournament and they're making their major tournament debut at this one. And whilst I don't see them progressing from their group, they've still got enough good challenges to mount a challenge when push comes to shove. So I'd expect if they are to go through, they'd be relying on some good performances from Tony Yura and Asad Vala. Oman come into the tournament in relatively favourable conditions. They didn't get the hard group of Group A and they should be more used to these types of conditions than the rest of the teams in their group. That doesn't mean they're necessarily going to have a great understanding, but they should be fine. They've got a decent squad, um, although I would say one of the players most important to them, their success at this tournament, being Jatinder Singh. He isn't in great form, but they've got a deep enough batting order to account, to, uh, account for that. And whilst their paces, I wouldn't say their pace bowls aren't in very good form either, um, Kawa Ali and the rest of the spinners should be able to pick up the slack in that regard. Now Scotland. Scotland actually picked a very, very good squad. They've got great power at the top of the order with Munzee, Barrington and Cross. And with McLeod and Kurtzer, you'd expect them to be able to stabilise the innings and rebuild and accumulate if, if need be. I like the pace stocks they've picked a lot. I think they're very good in that regard. Maybe the spinners could do a bit of a adjustment you know they've got Hamza to here and they've got Watt but outside of that they've got Michael Leesk who I'm not 100% you know sold on myself um, and they're all rounders I wouldn't say are brilliant either Leesk again he's a bit inconsistent Barrington and Budge I don't know if you can rely on them to get through four overs every match so they might have to pick quite a long bowling attack each match but ultimately I still think they are a very very good squad and should probably finish second in the group and with Bangladesh not much more needs to be said than the fact that they are currently sixth ranked in the world I think they've had a very good lead into this tournament albeit on remarkably different pitches at home the sort of stuff that's very hard to bat on but they've just got too much they've got too much power in their squad to not top this group I think unless Scotland do something insane I think Bangladesh will probably win three from three and top the group. Um, you just have to look at the sort of players at disposal. You know, Shakib Al Hassan, above all else, is one of the best players in world cricket, full stop, let alone in this group. So I think them getting the, the weaker group, first of all, has played into their hands, probably being more familiar with the conditions than Papua New Guinea and Scotland, and just straight up having better players at their disposal means they probably should top the group.